Hi everyone, my name is David. This channel is Demars Coaching. Today I'm going to talk about or give you one sure way to know that someone with borderline personality disorder is cheating on you. Could be just friends, right? You're just the best friend, favorite person, and then no longer you are. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you why, what to look for, how to know. And this doesn't apply to all people with this disorder. So if you're watching this and you don't do any of this, then I'm not talking about you. But I promise you, I know, I'm confident that most people with this disorder do this. Okay? So we know borderlines, and just to be clear, this is now called emotionally unstable personality disorder, but most people don't know that. I'm just going to call them borderlines today. Borderlines idealize, and it's something we're all probably guilty of to some degree, but they idealize a lot, major, and they also devalue, which is something that we don't do. We, we idealize when we meet someone we're really excited about, really like, we go tell our best friend, oh my gosh, this person is the perfect person, it's everything that I've ever wanted in another human being, they're amazing, yeah, but how long have you known them? Oh, four days. <laughs> You're simply telling your friend or whoever you're telling about this person your idealized version of a human being and you think they fit. But that's what you're telling them. And they mirror. Borderlines mirror people. Something that maybe we've all, we definitely all do. All have done, I should say, growing up. We may not necessarily mirror people today. We may mimic them. But psychological mirroring by the borderline is subconscious. They're not quite aware of it. And a lot of the ways we might mimic somebody, we're not aware of either. We know they lack a sense of self and identity. And they may assume yours. They may adopt your mannerisms, your movements, the way you walk or or the way you, your facial gestures or your style of speech, maybe use phrases or unique words that you use, your style of dress, share the same interests all of a sudden. Example, some word that you use, like ditto, reminds me of an old movie, Ghost. But people don't usually say ditto too much. Ditto, ditto, ditto. So if you say ditto and you meet someone who all of a sudden just starts using ditto, ditto, ditto. It's kind of weird. Isn't it? They'll do that. Or maybe you jog every day. And these are examples I've heard about borderlines, by the way. You, you may jog every day, be way into it. And then you have a new partner you start dating. And they say they don't jog, never have. <laughs> never. They're not very um, active, so to speak. But all of a sudden... Oh, they're going to start jogging with you. And they're all gung-ho about it. Boom, boom, boom. They get, the, they get the jogging outfit and the shoes. And they're like, let's go. And then they can't really do it. And then they give up quick. They may not be into sports at all. Know nothing about baseball, basketball, football. Any of them, really. Never played one. Not into it. But all of a sudden now, they're a Cubs fan like you are. Chicago Cubs. They, 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 like, they like baseball. Yeah, I like the Cubs. It's really cool colors. It's not just because you do, honey. But that has a lot to do with it. They may all of a sudden be religious, have the same beliefs you do. All of a sudden they're Christian. But they told you they didn't grow up that way. They haven't been to a church ever. <laughs> now they're they're Christian. And, and they'll tell you, they've, they've always been inclined and gravitated towards Christianity. But now they're full-blown Christian. They may all of a sudden like your music, which they didn't before. They love your music and they play it when you get in their car or something in the house. Favorite food. They never really, I mean, they always liked it, you know, but now they love it. They want to eat it all the time like you do. You may notice these, but you won't notice all of them. And these kinds of things will help gain your trusts and interests. They will stroke your ego and increase your unique grandiosity or sense of it. This is why narcissists love them. 
narcissists and borderlines go together like that. Not to say you are just because you dated one. But they will increase your own narcissism. Detectives in interrogations do this to build rapport. A tactic detectives use in the beginning of an interrogation is simply just have a casual conversation with them. They're trying to know where their baseline is and who they are when they're telling the truth, simple questions. But they might sit at the desk like this because you are. You might have a leg cross and they've got a leg cross and they're doing the same thing to you. And it builds that rapport with them. Most people being interrogated don't even realize that they're doing it. Verywellmind.com had a story about something called the chameleon effect. I've talked about this before years ago, but it's a phenomenon that finds us mimicking the mannerisms, gestures, or facial expressions of the people we interact with the most. It causes you to subconsciously make behavioral changes to match the behavior of people in your close social circles. Phenomenon. Not that we all do it. We all mimic people, sometimes for fun, consciously, or sometimes to make fun of them, right? But sometimes we subconsciously do it. And it's said that it's unclear why, but I believe it's to connect with people, to fit in, to build empathy. That's what it does. It helps. And we're all guilty of that. I mean, it's, it's kind of like conforming, you know? Um, I want to know what the dress code is before I go to an event. Not to see what I can get away with. No, I want to dress like everybody else is dressing. Yeah, You want to get a job? It's best to go to the interview dressed as, as the role, as the job. Um, we won't be louder than a group of people tend to. We, you know, we understand if, if, if it's, there's alcohol at the event and, and it's a casual event, and, but people aren't drinking much, we, we aren't going to get wasted, right? Hopefully. All kinds of different things that we do like that. But we typically don't mirror people like that. Um, it can be used by people who are manipulative, exploitative. Psychopaths do this big time. So I think it's a part of subconscious manipulation by the borderline. I believe mirroring early in life with babies is necessary for both bonding and developing a sense of self. The first time we realize that we are not our mothers, because when we're born, we believe we are one person with our mother. And we begin to develop our own separate sense of self or identity when mom is not mirroring us. So in the beginning of life, mother, you know, babies, uh, and the mom will go, oh, uh, and cough you. And the baby sees themselves. The mother is their first mirror, literally, believes that same person. But at some point, you're a baby and you're upset and fussy and you look at mom and mom's laughing, smiling, talking to a friend. And you're like, oh, we're not the same person. And I think all of this is extremely healthy in development. And you can see why borderlines developed unhealthy, the unhealthy sense of self, identity, self-awareness. Borderlines typically form a disorganized attachment due to this, and there's no healthy bonding. And it's due to the mother's typical anxiety, addictions, their own trauma. So, the borderline will continue to mirror people subconsciously. And I think also some of it is consciously. But how do we know they're cheating? The title of the video, how do we know they're cheating? And I'm not saying that if a borderline's cheating, you always know because they do this. I'm just saying if they start acting like this, you know they're cheating somehow. Doesn't have to be sex, right? <clears throat> they mirror someone else. They have a new favorite person they're idealizing and mirroring. You are no longer idealized. And they change. Now, there's obvious signs when someone's cheating in a relationship. Um, just top of my head, I mean, they're not available. You know, the lipstick or perfume or um, unspoken time gone. They're, they're gone, but they can't really tell you what they're doing. And, you know, 
hiding the phone and there's so many different clues and stuff like this our own gut feeling insecurity but when a borderline is now mirroring someone else and idealizing them big signs big signs no longer interested in your interests no longer really a cubs fan anymore don't want to go to the games with you don't care don't wear the hat suddenly they may have a new best friend new interests yeah now all of a sudden they're putting on biker gear <laughs> right yeah you've never been a motorcycle never talked about it they never have never talked about it but all of a sudden and they they want a leather outfit or I'm just using that as an example. I mean, I mean, imagine they're all of a sudden now they're, they pick a different team. Instead of a Cubs fan, they're a Pirates fan. And you're like, wait a minute. You've never liked baseball. Now you like the Cubs because me, but now you like a different team. And you might take that as, oh, are they being like defiant or something somehow? No, their favorite person is a Pirates fan. You will soon, soon be devalued and possibly triangulated. If they don't, as they're monkey branching from them to you, they may stay with you for a while. They're reliant, dependent on you still until they get that other person to sign the contract and assume full responsibility for them like you did. 180 degrees, 180 degree difference in who they are. They're probably cheating, probably cheating. And that can't cause more stress, more confusion, more self-doubt, anxiety, insecurity. Might get you to start pursuing them more. It's almost like that push-pull game they played with you. You're not sure what's going on. Your suspicions are high. Very insecure. No more security in the relationship. Then you might start seeing the signs that I talked about before, but... The full change in personality. It's almost like they're being hypnotized by someone else. Anyone else ever felt that way about a partner or friend? You're like, you're like, who's gotten a hold of you? You know, like, where, where have you been and who with? And like all these new interests that you've never been interested in before. And, you know, like a teenager that that goes through phases of, um, you know, being total preppy to being a, a punk or, a, a, you, know, you know, all into rap music, or, you know, but just suddenly changes and you're like, what the hell is going on? And I imagine that's how parents feel with teenagers. But this could be like, bam, overnight. Overnight. And they may start talking different mannerisms. And it's going to be different because once you're not the favorite person anymore and somebody else is, and they're idealizing someone else, they're not going to be idealizing you anymore. They'll seem distant, pulling away. But they'll be telling, oh, God, no, nothing, no, nothing. They'll all of a sudden just be happy and you're not making them happy anymore. Remember that? Because it's your job to make them happy. No, let's say the only way they can be happy is by you. Yeah? But now they don't really need that anymore now they're all happy on their own maybe that's the first sign you no longer have to make them happy they're happy and they're like you you know i mean they, these are these are love addicts if they ever love dating addicts relationship addicts the beginning it's great eh, not the beginning anymore bye Beginning with someone else, great. Beginning with someone else, great. No sense of self or identity. Assuming others. I couldn't imagine living that way. I think it really shows just how unbelievably unstable they are, which feels like crap. I don't need to live like that. You guys don't need to live like that to understand that, right? I mean, I get all the time from you guys, how can someone do, how can someone just go right from someone to the next? How can they just throw everything away? How can they change so fast? How, how, how? Because there's no real base to who they are. These are the most easily influenced people on the planet. Someone can just walk right by and talk them into just throwing their entire lives away. 
That's hard to do for most of us. I've uh, I've uh, referred to it as a as a uh, method actor before. For these, those of you who don't know what a method actor is, the method actor remains the role throughout the entire whatever it is show or movie. Even at home, they dress the part, they sound the part, and they just keep doing it to remain in that role, right? And I think that would be, and, and, and I'm not even saying that it is definitely this, but it, it's kind of like uh, somebody is so set in who they are, they know who they are so well, they can't just be somebody else that easy. So they'll method act to really get in that role. Um, and, and whereas like somebody who just doesn't know who they are, doesn't care, they can be someone every day, they can just walk up to a soap opera, get the script handed to them and just be that person, no problem. Just so unstable. I have compassion for them, but this just annihilates people, destroys them. The betrayal, trauma, the mass confusion, the insecurity, um, what are some examples you guys have? Do you mind sharing your experiences of somebody doing this to you in your life? Just switching like a light switch. They'll often be misdiagnosed as bipolar for this, but that's not bipolar. No. No. This is personality. They really say you can't change who you are, ever. We develop our personalities as we enter adulthood and our brains finally stop growing. And that's who we are. You ever seen, you ever not seen someone for 20, 30 years, 40? Maybe they're gray and wrinkled and lost weight or gain weight and they just look so different. But once they start talking, like, there you are. That's you. Not with a borderline. Borderline, you could look the same. You're like, who in the hell are you? If you feel comfortable sharing your experiences, I would really appreciate it. So would the people, a lot of people watching this. Share your own experiences, comments, ask questions, please. I'll always answer them. If you feel this is beneficial to you, if you want to support this message, of what I'm doing here, you can share this video. You can like it. You can comment down below and most of all, subscribe to the channel. Anybody that wants coaching with stuff like this, anything like this, you can find me at daviddemars.com. Thank you. Everybody, and love yourself first, please.